Hello, Mr. President. Hello, it's an honor to meet Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity. It. Well, let's begin at the beginning here. What I have here is the Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. Don't hurt yourself. And it is a thick one. Right. And we counted, and 10 sections deal with things like derivatives right. and systemic risk, and five talk about credit scores right. and mortgages. Persuade me that this law matters to ordinary Americans. Oh, it, it matters in so many ways. And, and keep in mind, first of all, that this is building off a num number of laws that we've passed during the course of the last 18 months that are directly uh, addressing problems that consumers are experiencing. So let me just give you some examples that I think your viewers will be familiar with. Uh, when it comes to credit cards, uh, this law says uh, that we are going to have a single agency that's going to be able to enforce rules that prohibit hidden fees, that make sure that there's a 45-day notice period before a credit card company can jack up your rates that if they're going to increase your rates, they can increase those rates on the existing balances only on future balances. So right there, you've got a package of reforms and an enforcement mechanism so that people are going to be able to save money and plan uh, their uh, finances in a much more responsible way. Some people may have also noticed that there are a number of changes that credit card companies have made on their statements. One in particular, a box that shows that uh, if you don't just pay your minimum payment and you're not paying your full payment, that it's going to cost you X amount more. Uh, essentially doing the interest calculation for you so that you can see it in a very clear way. Well, that wasn't something that the credit card companies just decided to do out of the goodness of their heart. They did it because we had passed a credit card uh, reform law earlier and now we've got additional enforcement mechanisms for it. Now that's just on the credit card side. Uh, on the mortgage front, we're going to be able to make sure that mortgage brokers are not uh, uh, steering you towards a more expensive mortgage because they're getting a hidden kickback from the mortgage issuer. Uh, there's going to be a standard of care, meaning that uh, mortgage brokers have to uh, operate in an honest and transparent way with you, and if they don't, they're going to be subject to penalties. Uh, so uh, on mortgages, on credit cards, on uh, student loans, on you know, payday loans, on a whole host of credit uh, issues, the consumer is going to now not only have more security and protection, but they're also going to have somebody whose sole job is to look out for them at the federal level and working with states, attorney generals, and other consumer advocates. And, and overall, I think what this is going to result in is people having more control over their finances and uh, hopefully uh, they're going to be saving money. In fact, you've called this the strongest consumer financial protection system in history. Right. Sometimes that brings unintended consequences. Right. And already the credit card companies are starting to bring back annual fees. And the banks are doing away with free checking. What kind of recourse do consumers have when that happens? Well, one of the things that uh, we encourage in this reform is just better information. So if you are able to shop online for the best fees and you know or, or, or the best deal from a credit card company. If you can go to a website uh, and have somebody let you know, I, I get a better deal from that company than I do from this company, uh, that's going to empower you. And, and so much of what needs to be done in the consumer area is to empower the consumer so that they can make good choices. They can make the best choices. There are already good deals out there. You, you, know, you, you make a, a wonderful living helping people make good decisions. Uh, but what we want to do is to make that uh, more widespread so that consumers have the information they need uh, in order to uh, look out for their families and their own interests. You know, the law relies heavily on regulators to mm -hmm. detect and deter problems. Right. But as an example, the SEC knew about Bernie Madoff. Mm -hmm. Whistleblowers had spelled it out, right. and yet the agency failed to act. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know, why do you think this new agency and these new regulators will do any right. better? Well, you're absolutely right that regulations are only as good as the regulators uh, who are applying them. And what we have done is provided a framework in which we are assuring that the regulators have the power to scrutinize systemic risks in the financial system that could lead to another financial meltdown of the sort that we had, that are making sure that complex derivatives are 
in uh, a open uh, market that people can see and can be monitored. But we've got to have good regulators there, people who are serious about their job, who understand that they are looking out for the public interest, that aren't subject to industry capture. Uh, and those are all things that uh, we're going to have to spend a lot of time on, a lot of energy on, and, and, and some of these big systemic reforms are going to take several years to uh, put into place. But if we don't have this kind of framework, then what you end up having is a whole bunch of agencies splintered, not really focused, without clear lines of responsibility, and in some cases, no clear authority. And that's part of what led to the crisis that has obviously devastated ordinary families uh, over the last two years.